was going to run some model trains to keep me awake because my sleep schedule is atrocious. And it turns out that for some reason, I have stepped into a giant conspiracy about model train controllers. And this shit is wild. So, wiggles down for story time. Hornby cut ties with the American model train company Bachman a few years back because of a dispute over Thomas the Tank Engine sales. Except they didn't. They stopped selling some items, but Hornby still sells Bachman products in Europe, and Bachman sells a select choice of Hornby items like weird vintage toy releases and certain train sets, Beatles, Eurostar, My Beloved, and Flying Scotsman, like iconic, iconic sets. However, Hornby stopped selling accessories to their products in America because of this whole thing. So you can buy train sets, but you can't buy train tracks. You can buy certain model trains, but you can't buy replacement parts, couplers, etc. So, I have an R965 controller from a set that was originally sold in the UK. So my cable has a is a UK cable. But, because Bachman doesn't sell Hornby accessories anymore, I need to import a US cable, right? Well, Hornby has sold like 20 odd variations of this one controller, each variation having a slightly different electronics configuration. The version I have has a cable that plugs into a standard wall plug, converts the plug converts the power to 16 volts, then the controller converts the output to 12 volts. However, there are versions that plug into only 120, 140 volt plugs that convert to 15 volts, then the transformer converts to 11.5 volts, or plugs that only plug into 12 volt wall plugs that convert to 19 volt, and then to 13, then to 12? We're talking all kinds of fucked up plugs. Now, because there are apparently 20 plus versions of my controller, the company I bought my train set through didn't even send me the right cable for my controller. It was tested that it works, so I don't think it's that big of a deal, but come on. So, then I find out that Hornby does still sell power adapters, but only in stores in the UK. You can't buy them online, ever at retailers who shipped to the US because they were banned from making US power adapters and being able to import them at some point because they were pulling shit with 20 plus cables and 20 plus controllers all with different things and people were plugging shit in and it was just like exploding and sending interference and messing with houses and setting fires because Hornby, apparently in the UK, doesn't have any issues sending random cables with random controllers because they're all within tolerance that American plugs can handle. But they still sell train sets in America with the banned cables and controllers because they only sell via American retailers who buy the products before delivery and take on the blame. So if I buy it from Amazon, it's Amazon's fault, not Hornby, that makes it so they can sell it at a liability risk instead of being banned. So, they not only sell the cable I need and it's readily available at stores all around the world, I can't get this cable. No one can get this cable in the country that the cable is needed for because it's banned. And cherry on top. Hornby make a proprietary cable that has a really weird power barrel on it, so I can't even buy my own cable to plug into my controller because it has some weird ass dimension and plug on it. So I have a train set that I bought for $160 last year. That train set has a cable that technically that is technically incompatible with the set it came with, but that cable but it came with that cable from the manufacturer. And to get the cable I need, I would have to fly back to the UK, go to the model train shop, 
buy this stupid cable that is illegal in the U.S. So technically, I can't bring it over the border. So I can't actually get my hands on it unless I bought a train set from Amazon for another $160. I don't have any other track or my Tech 2 controller on me because my parents hid my old train stuff for me. So I'm sitting here at 2.30 a.m. researching this stupid fucking piece of plastic that'll burn down my house if I plug it in. So even if I buy a wall adapter, there's a chance I can fuck up my house just by plugging this in because there's no known list of what cables and what controllers are safe. But UK cables have a fuse built in. So that means if I plug it in and it fucks over my house, the cable will self-destruct once it starts a short circuit or whatever. So I can only set my house on fire once. But then... I yet again have a train set with no cable for the controller and no way to buy the cable legally. There is literally no winning unless I buy another train set and pray to God that it has the new version of the controller that doesn't have 20 plus variations. Except their new version of the controller apparently doesn't work properly because they basically redesigned it to be digital instead of analog. So it runs the trains like shit. So most of the time they sell you the old controller because it works better. Except that one's illegal in the United States of goddamn America and could set my house on fire. So if I order a train set for almost 200 smackaroos on Amazon, there is a game of Russian roulette where the guys packing my set in the UK might put in a controller that doesn't work properly but won't burn my house down. Or they will put in a controller that works properly but has a chance of blowing up my house. And no one knows what controller they might get. When they order a train set from Hornby, because there is no official decision, Hornby is the largest manufacturer of model trains in the world. Oops, guess you need a converter, Hornby. And at this point, I'm not even mad. I just want to know how the fuck this happened. Oh, gonna buy the transphobia train, even though the train they used in the movie is technically transgender. Whole other thing. There's a chance I'll blow up my house and not work or not work out of the box. What fun! Image of Hornby Hobbies. Warner Brothers Harry Potter Hogwarts Express Electric Model Train Set HO Track with US Power Supply R1234MR. What do you mean the train is transgender? Even technically. Oh, hold on to your butts. This is a wild one. Yay! So, the Hogwarts Express is a 460 Hall class. The engine and her class are built in, as Swindon pedigrees by the G- GWR Railway in the 20s and 40s. The Hogwarts Express was originally Olten Hall. Olten Hall was a mixed traffic engine, didn't do much exciting work, so she was unnamed boarded and unceremonied, meaning she was just a faithful girl who did her job well. Except she was a lucky engine and moved to Barry Scrapyard, which is basically a safe haven for steam engines, and it was one of the Lucky Barry engines. So after Olten was saved from scrap, she became well-loved and taken care of and rebuilt into peak working order, and she ended up giving, being given a name board service, the Jacobite Express. Which means she's nameboarded. She technically is Jacobite, which means she would be he, and that's a masculine, because that's a masculine title. Also, in the movie, they wanted a castle class engine, but decided to use Olten for her work and location. So, when she is on her duties as Hogwarts Castle, she would also be nameboarded, and her new name would be a male name, because castle classes are male. So again, she would be he, him. But she also runs a few other masculine name board services, so sometimes she runs trains as female and sometimes as male. Peak gender fluid vehicle. What determines gendered titles for trains for more context? So, steam engines are, and most vehicles, are she by default as a sign of respect. Yeah, like boats! 
It's a sailing tradition, and it's pretty complicated and nuanced. But with steam engines, it's also determined by pedigree, builder, railway, name service, and all kinds of other weird shit. So, the Flying Scotsman... So, the engine Flying Scotsman is she, because flying is feminine and gendered, and Scotsman is neutral. But, when she runs as THE Flying Scotsman, her name board service, THE is masculine, flying is feminine, and Scotsman has a man in it, so it becomes masculine. So her name board service is masculine, and she becomes he while on that service. There are also diesels called warships that are generally referred to as he-she, because ship is feminine and war is masculine. Whereas castle engines are masculine, because castles equal royalty equals kings equals masculine. I'm... Realizing there might be trains on Sodor that might be accidentally trans too, unless there's really close attention to detail. Do not get me started on transgender. I have been having discourse about it for the past 12 hours. But I can if you want, uwu. As I have feared. But yes, I'm curious. I'm not sleeping yet. Huh. Anyways, Flying Scotsman in the original text is transgender because they refer to him as male with masculine pronouns, even though she is technically feminine. In Cerdic, the language is Sodor. The names Garlowe and Renee's refer to water. That would make them feminine, so the engines associated would be she, her. But they choose to go as he, him, while both of their twin sisters are feminine. Oh, nice. They have their own language? Peter Sam on the Scarlowy Railway started as Stuart and always went by he, him, which is accurate. But Sir Handel started as Falcon, a feminine engine name, but uses he, him, and eventually changes name to Sir Handel, a masculine name. Hulo tama vari viagua mi alud as ahin. Smiling emoji. It's not a complete language, but it's based on Manx Irish and has a good portion of its language fleshed out. Link to my lingo jam. I made this years ago. Anyways. Ooh, that's cool. Literally, like, all of the Coldy Fell Railway is technically trans. They have feminine names and use he, him pronouns besides Lord Harry. Godred is technically a toss-up because Godred is a royal name, which would actually be feminine, but because it's a male ruler, some argue it'd be masculine, but that's not always the case. IRL Bluebelt Railway Engine Stepney is referred to as male, is she, her, IRL. City of Churro as well. City class was feminine. There are tons of engines who exist IRL and would be feminine, but are actually referred to as masculine. Toby, Duck, Donald and Douglas, Henry 2, not Henry 1, Gordon on technicality, Toad, a brake van. Pip and Emma are trans femme, I believe. Their class would be referred to masculinely, but they may be based on a feminine class 43 inner city train set. Okay. Pip and Emma were developed in Derby at RTC, which is conflict because RT. C engines are usually masculine, but Darby works as feminine. The motive power was Paxton, mask, but the code name Valenta, femme. They pulled royal code name Royal Train, mask, but were also train sets, mask, but also have variants that are buffered sets, feminine, and are surrogatable, feminine. And they are rearrangeable train sets, feminine, but some are non-rearrangeable for certain trains. Mask. Oh my god, okay. They're passenger-only femme, but they have been converted to postal trains, mask or femme, depending on the run. And they have had runs in Germany, femme-calling country, and Mexico, mask-calling country. Oh, I haven't even considered the operators yet. Okay, eight different operators in the UK. Five feminine, one mask femme, two mask. I'm going to scream this is complicated. So they started as BR, surrogatable, rearrangeable train sets, femme. So they started as cis, technically, but they were privatized, but we don't know what the operator was. So then they would have to become 
masculine, most likely, based on region. It would have been a mask railway, which makes trans femme, but then they were sold to the NWR, which doesn't have a gender preference. You could argue mask, but none of its ver verbiage suggests mask or femme. Directional words are neutral, and railway doesn't count, but is technically femme. So, Pip and Emma would remain masculine because of previous ownership, but still use feminine terms. So, trans femme. God, this shit is complicated. Oh, Oliver is trans mask. Does sound complicated. <laughs> Train gender was made more complicated than needed to be when people started deciding certain things like name boards could alter gender. God! Okay. Pip and Emma run the Wild Norwestern service, which is a feminine service, which is also what Gordon sometimes runs. So sometimes Gordon is she, her. Gordon also runs Sertian, which is femme, I believe. Don't get me started on Henry, because technically he died and came back as a clone or some shit. Technically, Henry is a bastard engine, who was only built because some guy broke into Gordon Builder's house, beat Gordon's dad up, and then stole Gordon's blueprints, but didn't actually steal Gordon's blueprints. He stole rejected bad blueprints for a fucking awful, unfunctional engine that were supposed to be burnt. And then the they built Henry and went, man, this shit sucks, and then sold him to the Fat Controller, completely lying about what Henry was. Then the Fat Controller got Henry, and he was so mad, he, like, started yelling the most obscene bullshit that is censored in the books. But there is a letter where he basically calls a man who sold him Henry every slur and swear possible. Then Henry was like, horribly sick and unfunctional and in continuous pain and then he was locked in a tunnel for being an ass then let out then started to be even more sick then they started him on train asthma medication henry didn't stuck for a while and then he crashed in a horrible accident and nearly died so the fat controller sent him to the train hospital and they literally million dollar manned him they have the technology and they rebuilt him completely from the ground. So he was no longer a stolen bastard engine, but a weird bastardization of Black Five. And then Sodor historians were like, hey, um, Topham, Henry is a little different since he came back. Like, there's something off about Henry. And the fat controller was like, hee hee hoo, Henry is all better. He is fine. Nothing wrong here. But like, he was wrong. So now they call the original sick Henry, Henry One, and the new Henry, Henry Two. This is a kid's franchise. Man, I didn't think it got deeper than, fuck you, helicopter, I beat you in a race. Percy and Harold is so fucking funny. I'm super cool and can fly and hover. Okay. You wish you were me. No, I don't. I'm so fucking cool and you suck. No, I don't agree. I like being a train. But I'm a helicopter. Cope and seethe. Get fucked. Also, I'm faster than you. I just can't remember what the twist was at the end. Nope, that was basically it. Harold was a fucking asshole for no reason. And Percy beats him, beats him in a race that Harold started by a, by a long shot. Ah. Uh. Some stories are just like, idiot is stupid as fuck and gets comeuppance. Or it's like really deep introspective and mystical look into the psyche of engines dealing with genocide. Or others I can't remember. Oh god, I'm out of control for some reason. That's mostly the show. In the books, all the runaways are like some teenagers breaking into the railway and stealing an engine or some shit. Yeah, I remember that from the VHS. Rip James, he was straight up stolen and then Edward had to save his ass. Didn't someone's conductor collapse? 
James's driver got mono and then passed out, so James was put into a holding siding. So some teenagers stole James and were like, joyride! And once James got going, they abandoned ship. They got caught by some railway workers. And then James had his whole ass adventure where he almost exploded and derailed and died. And after he was saved, the book was like, and then the boys were arrested and their parents beat the sin out of them. And you finish the book like, huh? What? It was mono? I think so. It explained what he was sick from in one of the companion textbooks. I didn't realize how crazy dark it was either. Train show for baby brother. Train gender is wildly complex, but also like some people call flying Scotsman Scott and use he him because they feel like it. It's a wild world. Also, Thomas has this wild reputation as like the books are heavily remembered by the people who grew up on them being this really dark and mature look into a parallel world and the books matured with the audience so little kids read the silly fun train books older kids got a more realistic sodor and teens and adults ended up with serious books with deep and mature topics the classic model show is remembered as like a kid show where all the trains are sassy but it's entertaining and beautiful at times People who grew up know Thomas Post 2000 Magic Railroad often are like, oh, baby show with trains, and have no clue the source material is so in-depth. What are the original books, anyway?